Spears, Pick a Street. Jesse Moore, Pick a Street Properties. And today's topic, uh, we're going to chat a little bit about uh, un uh, what's a little bit of a unique uh, scenario. We had uh, multiple offers on a short sale. Um, you don't hear much about sh short sales receiving multiple offers or multiple offers in general these days. Most people expect that's dead. So I think that um, there's a couple things we're looking for on a short sale. Uh, one of them being we really want a buyer who's committed to the process. Yeah, on this property we got four offers in three days and I, we would have had more if, I, if we hadn't just rushed to kind of decide on an offer because right. we were actually eager to get this one pending. Yeah. To, to stop the flood of phone calls and, and emails and offers. So, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, and it is, you have to counsel buyer's agents when they call us, you know, and we're trying to, t they're like, what can we do to get this property in? And uh, it's not so much about the price. I mean, the price obviously is important, um, but we just, we need a price that the bank will accept. So then other terms actually become a greater concern. Right. Yeah, and we actually had, uh, we had one all cash offer which is kind of kind of interesting because most people think of a cash offer as kind of that's cash is king. Um, not so much on a short sale. It's just not as important. The bank is when we're when we're going to negotiate and talk to the bank, the bank doesn't care what form they receive payment in. They want to make sure that they're going to net the absolute maximum they possibly can when that comes out. Yeah, I mean something that I've always said is it it doesn't really matter when the bank gets it, it's cash anyway. You know, yeah, exactly. Actually, whether or not it comes from another bank is, is not as important. And so the main things that we're worried about on a multiple offer situation in a short sale is, um, again, not price first and foremost, but um, other considerations like will the buyer do their inspection prior to lien holder approval? Mm -hmm. I mean, will that buyer do their inspection within the first week of being under contract to make sure that we don't work for months on this file just to have them walk on inspection? Right, well, and the, the consideration there being we're going to take this, mark, this, this property off the market. It's essentially not going to be available. We're not going to be marketing it actively because we've got a contract on it. There's no reason to be doing right. that. And if we're, we're taking it off the market, then the trade-off for that is that we want the buyer to get their inspection done. Well, not only that, but the approval comes in, is specific to the buyer in most cases. Right. And so if we work for months and get an approval and the buyer walks, uh, it's not like we just get to slap that approval on another buyer. No, we, it makes it means we have to restart that process, and so because of that, um, we would prefer to make sure we would prefer to know that <coughs> the buyer's not going to rescind on inspection. Right. Um, another thing that's really really important is the competency of the buyer's agent, and also the spirit of the buyer's agent. Yeah. We, I've always said the hardest part of my job is dealing with other real estate agents, and that has not changed too much. No, Although right. dealing with banks is, is it's going to be there. there. <laughs> but dealing with other agents is still the hardest part of my job, and it's just because, um, quite honestly, uh, egos come with agents. And so in the short sale world, we really need to control that process. <clears throat> I need a buyer's agent that, that's going to allow us to do that. Right. And uh, not try to get too confrontational, not try to push their weight around or, or do anything like that. And so in this case, on that um, property, I did have a sentiment about the buyer's agent. They were willing to do their inspection up front. Uh, mm -hmm. They were willing to do what was ever necessary to get this property. And I had the support of the buyer's agent moving forward. So um, we did not choose the cash offer. We chose a different offer um, mm -hmm. that had the most amenable terms to our seller. So our seller is not interested in not, you know, every time they, every month we extend this process, uh, could be another 30 day late or 60 day right. late for our clients. And so we're not as concerned about um, the price or cash terms. We're more concerned about um, doing this effectively and as quickly as possible. Right. And so that means having just one buyer on a property, getting exactly. them to wait throughout the process, and then being able to close on that short sale. So that's how we handle multiple offers on short sale transactions. There you go. Thank right. you very much. Thanks, guys.